Loving God, thank you so much for people who have a greater expertise at things than I do. <laughs> thank you so much for the gift of laughter, the beauty of song, and the joy and love of being in community together. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart find themselves to be holy, 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 and acceptable in your sight. For you are my rock and my redeemer. Amen. And so it is. So, I have to catch y'all up on my morning. I got caught in a little bit of traffic on the 528. <laughs> Never fails. Um, this morning, <clears throat> as I was preparing to leave my house, I could hear all this ruckus outside. And I live in a fairly quiet neighborhood, so even a little bit of ruckus is a whole lot of noise. And so, I walked outside to see what was going on, and my neighbor across the street they had lost their brand new puppy. His name is Brody, and they'd have him about a week. So I'm not sure Brody even knows Brody's name. But they were outside frantically calling the puppy. And there was no way that I could get in my car and leave uh, them out there searching for the dog, including a, an eight-year-old little girl who was absolutely my favorite neighbor. So I was putting my things in the car, and how I found out about what really had happened was Gabriella, the eight-year-old, came over. And she was so sad, and she said, I can't find my puppy. And I'm like, man, if I lose my dog, I am like done. I need to call out for work because I'm just not going to make it. And so I stopped, and she said, will you help me look for him? And I went, okay, I can do that. After a few minutes of looking for him, let me tell you where we found him. I have these pots on my porch um, that are empty now. And Brody decided that he would just make himself at home in one of the pots. <laughs> and none of the human beings found Brody. Actually, my dog found Brody. Because um, that's his porch. And uh, when he came outside, he growled a little bit. And the only time Shanti growls or barks is when there's another dog. I didn't pay it any attention the couple of times we'd been in and out. And so when I was walking back in the house, Shanti stopped and he growled and he just kind of looked like, psst, over there. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked over because I was looking for Shanti and I like Can you hear me now? Yeah. Sid just doesn't like me, but it's okay. I got a lot of electrical energy in my body this morning. <laughs> Normally, our neighborhood cat lives in that pot. So I reached over and picked Birdie up, and he's a handful of a little tiny schnauzer. And so while everybody else is running through the neighborhood yelling, heard me, she came over, and I'm like, I think somebody's looking for you. And so needless to say, that made me about 15 minutes late on my normal trek out of the town. And while I'm barreling down the 528, there is a point in the road where traffic comes to a complete and screeching halt. I'm like, seriously, God? <laughs> <laughs> and there is a point where Ingrid, thank you for being here, Ingrid, 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 We've got troopers going down the side of the highway. We get down a little bit further, um, and there are a couple of cars that, are, that have, um, for some reason, are off the road and into the marsh. Nobody appeared to be hurt, but the cars, they need a little help. 
But of course, everybody had to stop and look. That was about the time I called Reverend Rose and left her a very panicked voicemail. So wherever she is in the world, if she calls in, if y'all insist, did Kathy make it? Go, yeah, she was here real early. <laughs> so that was my morning. Lost dog, crazy traffic. Now, here's the thing about being home and understanding the idea that there's no place like home. I love a good road trip. Now, people who travel with me, they may not enjoy the road trip with me as much as I enjoy the road trip, but nonetheless, we get where we're going and back all safely and everything. Now, here's something that I want to share with you. In my life, I've discovered that if you are more than 25 miles from home, if you are traveling at an average speed of about 65 miles an hour, if you are jamming to some tunes you hadn't heard in a while, but they speak to your soul, or you're listening to an audio book that you just discovered, Here's the thing, anything you eat, the calories don't count. So hold on to that. So here's the thing, when we head out on a road trip, the people in my house, they are more concerned with, you know, has the car had an oil change? Do I have the right clothes for the weather? I am in charge of snacks. I have to make sure that we have the right amount of everything. When we're traveling down the road, I tend to gaze out of the window because I like to watch how the fog just kind of gracefully sets across the land and just kind of rises out of nowhere. I like traveling across the bridges in Florida and looking at the way that land just kind of pops out of the bodies of water. I often wonder how the cows get out there <laughs> and how they get back. But they seem to be okay, so I try to find a way to be okay with that as well. When I look out of the windows, I start to read aloud all the billboards in the many languages that they appear. And did I mention about food? <laughs> you know, I don't know about you all, but in our vehicle, I am the only one who is the keeper of the snacks, the purveyor of music, the reader of billboards, and the keeper of time. Many years ago, I had a mentor who said to me, she said, Kathy, we are souls in evolution. That meant for me that we are moving and that we are growing, that we are expanding even when we're standing still. A road trip for me is an opportunity to find candy I haven't seen since I was seven. <laughs> it's a, a chance for me to find cans of something to drink that just say pop or they just have the flavor grape. I get excited about these things, and my favorite road trip pastime is how many flavors of pork rinds can I really <laughs> find while on a journey? <clears throat> Needless to say, it's a whole lot of fun in our car. So there is no place like home, and we are souls in evolution. The thing about realizing that there is no place like home is you typically have to take a journey to figure that out. There's a line from one of my favorite stories, The Wizard of Oz, is where this all comes from. And I think that the reason that this story has moved through life with me is that there came a point where I realized that there is a little bit of Dorothy, a little bit of the lion, a little bit of Scarecrow, a little bit of Tin Man, and a little bit of Wizard in all of us. All we have to do is access that presence, that consciousness within us. So today, we're going to engage each of these characters on a soul level. So I'm going to fast forward through the story a bit where Dorothy determines that she has to get to Oz. She needs to follow the Yellow Brick Road in order to get back home. So away she goes. She's traveling. She encounters a few surly characters along the way. Out of the brush jumps the lion who attempts to scare her, but only really scares himself. After that exciting exchange, he decides to take the journey to connect with his soul. He decided that he needed to see the wizard because he needed to get himself some courage. On this spiritual journey, the lion had to do what frightened him the most, and that was to embrace his own fearlessness by determining that courage is not an absence of fear. 
It's the acceptance that there is something in someone that is far, far greater than what he believed he was lacking. The journey continues. They run into the scarecrow who was kind of hanging around. And as they got him down off of the pole that he was on and they stuffed him back and, and got him back up and running, he said to them, I need a brain for him. The brain was a connection that allowed him to access the intellect that he already had. Now, I'm going to tell you where I'm going with this. You see, he wasn't searching for an opportunity to learn more stuff. He was searching for his own keys to the kingdom of his soul that he too would be allowed to access and put into use what he already knew. In short, he was looking for a way to, to know more of what he already knows. Next, they encountered the tin man. When they first encountered the tin man, he was rusted in place and he couldn't even speak. They oiled his joints and he joined them on the journey in search of a heart. The heart is our capacity to get the flow of love moving within him. You see, love was always with him. Even when he was not able to access it, he cried, he rusted, and he couldn't move. Love for the tin man was the catalyst that connects him to a new way of being. Lastly, we have Dorothy. She started this journey from a farm in Kansas. She dreamed of life over the rainbow. During a storm, she experienced what I call a shift in consciousness. Dorothy's lesson for me is that shift happens. She experienced a shift in consciousness that allowed her soul to move beyond the bounds of their farm, beyond the bounds of the state of Kansas, out into the world. She had to first depart the place that she knew as home in order to find her way back home. So here we have Dorothy, we have the lion, we have Tin Man, we have Scarecrow, all moving down the yellow brick road in search of their own keys to the kingdom. In their journey together, they realized that the blessing that they had was already theirs. How often have you left your house to go out to acquire something only to get back home and realize that you had a whole lot of it already? That happened to me the other day. I needed some sugar because I was going to make some Kool-Aid. And I went to the store and, ooh, sugar was on sale, so I got a lot of it. <laughs> and while I was putting it away, I found a lot of it that I bought the last time <laughs> that it was on sale. So it's real sweet in my house this morning. You see, that journey is a way that we live. The reason that we go looking for the thing we believe is absent is because it is already a part of us. Our soul is already attuned to it in the universe. We go looking for the things that we already are. The next journey I want to share with you is a journey of the modern day prophet. His name is Elmo. <laughs> I want to join Elmo in a moment that he realizes that there is more to life than just standing still. That life has a rhythm, it has a momentum. Here is Elmo and everybody around him is consumed with the idea of trying to get there. Have you ever been to the mall and you're trying to figure out where the store you're looking for is? You go find the sign and the first thing the sign tells you is that you are here. <laughs> so Elmo is surrounded by people who are trying to get there. That's all they can think about is life out there, stuff out there, this dream out there. So Elmo makes his way down to the dock. He takes a ferry, and he takes it across the lake, and he gets there. No sooner than Elmo gets off the ferry, he goes to the side, and what does he see? You are here. The truth that Elmo's journey teaches me is that there is no there, there. And if I lose the T, I have here, to always be willing to be here. The final journey I'll share with you comes from the Hebrew Bible, and it's the 
the point in the book of Jeremiah tells the story of those who were exiled from Jerusalem, the place that they call home, a place that held all of their memories, it held all of their identity as people. They were sent out away from the place that was their home into a new land. When they found themselves in the new land, they spent all their time trying to get back to Jerusalem. All God wanted them to do was experience the newness in the place where they were. When I first moved to Florida, and I've lived a lot of places in the world, but when I first moved to Florida, I moved here from Colorado. I loved Colorado. I can't stand the cold. <laughs> but I got here, and all I could think about were the snow-capped mountains, the ease of spring, the stagnant heat of the summer. All I could think about is what was. And I missed the beauty that was right in front of me, which was the very thing that I spoke into existence, I want to live in Florida. And I found myself here. So whether you take a road trip or you follow the yellow brick road or you're setting sail from here to there to find your place in a place where you've been sent, we have to be willing as people of faith to experience the new thing that God is doing in our lives to experience the newness of where we are sent and where we are standing. God says to us, even now, be connected to the place where I have sent you. Love it and let it love you back. Depend on it and let it depend on you. Be fully present and step into a new awakening that I have stirred up in you. I believe that when we do this, the connection that we establish is a soul connection. It's a connection that is deep and is personal, and that very moment where that place becomes the place that we make the beautiful declaration of I am home. I've been on this journey with you all for just about a few weeks more than a year, and I don't even remember the point where this became home, and you all became family. I just know that it is true. So rather than trying to figure out who, what, when, where, and why, I've chosen to just simply be in the place that my heart and my soul knows as home. You see, our own sense of home is an inward journey that has an outward awareness. We think of home in terms of structures and addresses and zip codes and two-story houses and ranch-style houses. We think of home where it smells like apple pie and cinnamon rolls and things like that. I really should do a sermon about food, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but beloved, I came to tell you that home is wherever you are. This came to me. One day I found myself standing in the mirror getting ready for work. And I have tried and tried to find myself listening more because I talk for a living. So in the morning when I wake up, for the first hour of my day, I speak no words. I simply listen. So while I'm trying to figure out what to do with all this hair on my head, I stood there, and these are the words that I heard from my soul. I have found my true place in you, for you are my loved one. You are the ground of my being and the promise of my rainbow. You are the wind that lifts me to new heights, you are the breath that reminds me that I am truly alive in you. You are the start of all of my journeys and always my welcoming destination. You are my home. The way to which I am returning and I am never far from. I find my quiet blessing in your thoughts. I shatter the silence with your words. I serve the world with your hands. I run every race with your feet and greet every soul with your eyes. In you I am free, whole and complete. You bear many names and titles in your living and in your work. 
yet the most profound name that I hold for you is home. I have found that in you there is no place like home. So this idea of home is not the place where we take our physicality and we settle into our favorite chair. The idea of home is that very space that the soul settles in to our physicality and declares that from behind your beautiful eyes, it declares the beauty of the world, that with your most eloquent words, it speaks truth and freedom to all that they encounter. There is no place like home today is a message for our soul, as our soul is always in evolution, always moving, always leaving, and always coming all at the same time. So wherever you find yourself in any moment, I say to you these words, welcome home, and know that wherever you are, there is no place like home. Amen. So it is. <laughs>